Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on Gibbs sampling. Alright, so previously we've talked about trying to sample from univariate distributions. Most of the methods that we talked about could be generalized to multivariate distributions, we just haven't done so. Today, or right now, we're going to make explicit trying to draw from this bivariate distribution for theta1 and theta2. Um, but we're going to think of situations where it's not practical to do direct simulation from this joint distribution or using accept, reject, or metropolis hastings. Um, but we're going to consider a situation where we can sample from the conditional distributions for theta1 given theta2 and for theta2 given theta1. So if you can sample from these two distributions, then you can use something called Gibbs sampling. All right, so we have exactly the same setup. We've got a joint distribution for theta1 and theta2, and we can sample from their two conditional distributions. Uh, and we're going to start with the initial value for theta1 and theta2 with the superscript 0. So this, the Gibbs sampler is going to say, all right, at iteration j, draw from the conditional distribution for theta1 conditional on the previous value for theta2. And then turn around and sample a value for theta2 from the full conditional distribution for theta2 given theta1 that you just drew. Alright, and this is the Gibbs sampler. Alright, so it, it's another Markov chain just like the Metropolis Hastings algorithm created. And so it has the same results that that uh, algorithm had. In particular, that this theta j vector, which has components theta1 and theta2, converges in distribution to a draw from the joint distribution that you're interested in, namely one that has the joint distribution p theta1 theta2. It should be clear again that the theta j's is not an independent sequence. It is again a Markov chain in that the draw at time j depended on what the time was at draw j minus 1. But similar to the Metropolis Hastings algorithm, we again, uh, under regularity conditions, have a law of large numbers and central limit theorem that says that for any function that we're interested in, we can take the mean of that function over these samples, and that does converge to the, uh, the expectation that we're interested in. I've changed the notation slightly here just to use the thetas that we've been using, and that p here is the joint distribution for theta 1 and theta 2. All right, so let's get to an example. The example we're going to use here for illustrative purposes is the bivariate normal. So theta here is going to be a normal with dimension 2, for simplicity a mean of 0, and a covariance matrix that has 1s on the diagonal and has rho, that is the correlation between components theta 1 and theta 2. All right, we can derive the, the conditional distributions for this model, namely theta 1 given theta 2, we have a mean that's shrunk back towards zero, I guess assuming that rho is between uh, zero and one. And we have a, a variance here. And we have exactly a symmetric distribution here for theta two given theta one. And these are the two conditional distributions for theta one given theta two and then theta two given theta one that will be necessary for the Gibbs sampler. So the way that the Gibbs sampler is going to work is that we're again going to start with an initial value. And at the first iteration, we're going to sample theta 1, conditional on this current value for theta 2. And then we're going to turn around and sample theta 2, given the conditional distribution for theta 1 that we just drew. All right, we repeat this procedure many times. So generically, at iteration k, we use the value for theta 2 at k minus 1, and then we use the value uh, for theta 1 at k to draw theta 2. All right, so that's the example. Here's an illustration of that example in practice. Here's the a bivariate normal with a correlation of 0.9. And we're going to start out here at the value minus 3, 3. So the first thing that we're going to do is find the full conditional distribution for theta 1 conditional on this current value for theta 2. So that is we're going to draw a slice at theta 2 equal to 3, and we're going to find that conditional distribution for theta 1, which turns out, as we saw in the last page, to be a normal distribution, and we're going to sample from it. So this gray line here indicates that we've moved theta 1 from the value it was of minus 3 up to a value of about 2.3.
Now we're going to turn around and do exactly the same thing, but now we're going to condition on the value for theta 1 of about 2.3, and we're going to fake the full conditional distribution for theta 2, conditional on that value for theta 1, and sample from it. Again, it's a normal distribution, easy to sample from, and now we have our new point here. So this here is the now the at iteration 1, the value for theta 1 and theta 2. We can repeat this procedure again and again. And what we see is that we're slowly moving toward the mass of this posterior distribution, or of this joint distribution for theta 1 and theta 2. Right? What we want to see are points that are sampled among these ellipses. So if we repeat this procedure a whole bunch of times, this is what we see. All right, so this was an example so far of a bivariate normal. We can have a k-component Gibbs sampler, that is if we can break down the theta vector into k different components, we can create a Gibbs sampler for those k components. It's going to have capital K steps. And here are the steps. The first step is to draw theta 1, conditional on the value for theta 2 up to theta k from the previous iteration. Now we're going to draw a value for theta 2, and we're going to use that value we just drew for theta 1, but we're going to use the previous iteration's value for theta 3 up to theta k. So generically, at, at step k within this iteration of the Gibbs sampler, we're going to use the newly updated values for all the parameters for theta 1 up to theta k minus 1 from this iteration, and then we're going to use the values for theta k plus 1 up to theta k from the previous iteration. We can conclude this iteration by drawing the last step, conditional on last step, that is for theta k, conditional on all the updated values for theta 1 up to theta k minus 1. These distributions here are all are called the full conditional distributions. That is, they're the distributions that are conditional on everything except for the parameter that we're trying to draw. And when constructing a Gibbs sampler, it's these full conditional distributions that are necessary. Now, I've been thinking about this, or I've been describing this problem, where theta 1 up to theta k are going to be scalars, but that's not necessary. Theta 1 could be bivariate, trivariate, could have arbitrarily large dimension, as long as you can sample from its full conditional distribution. So the Gibbs sample is a very versatile uh, sampling mechanism as long as you can construct the full conditional distribution. All right, so in summary, the Gibbs samplers can be used to draw samples from this joint distribution for theta. And it, you want to use it when other methods don't work well, but this is typically going to happen in high dimensions. That is, in theory, you can construct except rejection samplers in high dimensions, but the rejection rate is going to tend to be very large. Um, similarly, the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm, it's going to be hard to construct a good proposal in high dimensions. And all you need in order to, do, to construct a Gibbs sampler is to be able to draw samples from the full conditional distributions for a component theta k given all of the other components. The shorthand notation here is for all the components except for k.